I'm Greg Spots. I'm the Chief Sustainability Officer and one of the Assistant Directors uh, in Public Works for the City of Los Angeles. Uh, the Public Works Department has five different bureaus and my bureau is called the Bureau of Street Services. And we work on the, um, the roadway, the sidewalks, the street trees. And we've uh, gradually been getting into the idea that you know, urban cooling has to be part of the work that we're doing uh, that was already focused on mobility and uh, safety in the public right of way. I guess you guys have been talking a lot about the heat island effect, the fact that it's warmer in the city than in the surrounding countryside. And I've been leading an effort uh, to make LA the first city in California to put cruel pavement coating on a public street to see if that could affect uh, or reduce the heat island effect in Los Angeles. Um, Los Angeles has heat related illnesses and deaths and we're one of the only metro areas that has that in the winter. We can have a surprise heat wave in January and people aren't ready. Interestingly, um, places like LA uh, sometimes uh, catch uh, you know, vulnerable uh, populations unaware, uh, they're not ready. It's a little bit different than in Phoenix where everyone's expecting you know, a, a summer full of 100 degree days. Here we can get a, a sort of hot, humid air mass uh, even in January or February and some people aren't prepared. It could be youth, elderly people with medical conditions, folks who work outside, kids in classrooms. There's some studies that say that for each degree of additional heat in the classroom, uh, kids' test scores go down. So um, heat is a problem indoors and outdoors, but it's really a public health issue. Um, here's some of the eco-stress imagery, like what you guys have been looking at. This is the Los Angeles region. On the left, uh, you'll see that uh, just before midnight, in July 14th of 2018, you can see our entire road and freeway network. And this is not a map, right? You can only see this because the roads are hotter than the other parts of the terrain. And then on the right, at four o'clock in the morning, our largest roads and freeways, the port and the airport, are all giving off heat at the time when people most need recharge at night. So, Obviously, the hardscape that we've built for cars uh, is a big problem in terms of heat retention in the summer. And LA is expected to get quite a bit warmer. If you look over here in the upper left of this map, this rim over here are some very warm communities that are going to get warmer. Here, Woodland Hills is expected to go from 36 days a year exceeding 95 degrees Fahrenheit to 71. Over here, Silmar is supposed to go from 54 such days to 96, and Porter Ranch, 55 to 100. So we have a growing problem that we're trying to deal with. In 2015, uh, we set out to be the first city in um, California to put a cool pavement coating on a public street. But before we did that, we wanted to test it in an off-street location to make sure it was safe. So we had this manufacturer, Guard Top, apply their cool seal product on about 7,500 square feet of a off street parking lot we had at a city park in the San Fernando Valley. It goes on in two coats. On the left, you can see they're squeegeeing on the second coat. Each coat is about 50 microns. So it's very thin. It's not paint, but it functions kind of like paint. And the question is, could that make the surface temperature of this parking lot cooler than uncoated black asphalt? We set it up this way, almost like a natural experiment. We thought that this median here would kind of be like a heat insulator because, you know, asphalt is essentially actually a very thick liquid. And so if you just put the coating on one part, there would be heat transfer from the uncoated part to the coated part. So we thought this was a good experiment. And we saw that on summer afternoons, uh, using a laser th uh, thermometer, um, that the surface temperature was about 10 degrees Fahrenheit cooler on that light gray portion than on the regular black asphalt. And what we found is that that differential kept growing in the afternoon. It went from two degrees at like 11 a.m. to six degrees to 10 degrees. It kind of maxed out at 10 degrees. But we still wanted to know, how's that surface temperature in the afternoon affect that evening and the potential um, retransfer of heat from the pavement into the neighborhood? 
So then we got some money uh, from the city council and we installed one block of cool pavement coating on each of 15 city blocks, one in each of the council districts in Los Angeles. You can see it would be brought to the site uh, with this truck here and then we just hand squeegeed it out in two different coats. When it first goes down, it, the street is like so clean, it looks like you could eat off it, like you've never seen a street so light and bright. But it does very quickly pick up dirt and uh, vehicle fluids and wet leaves and other things. It doesn't stay looking that fresh. So um, we were finding that indeed it was about 10 degrees cooler. Here it is uh, a tweet that I put out. Um, you can see a lot of interesting tweets about uh, streets uh, from me at Spotnik uh, is my Twitter handle. Um, and you see on this particular day here in uh, Coronado Street, the uncoated black asphalt here was 148 degrees Fahrenheit surface temperature and the coated was 135. So that was uh, about a 13 degree temperature differential. We found that residents were very excited. Uh, they would come out and ask us, what are you doing? And we'd say, oh, we're testing this experimental coating to see if your street might be cooler. And uh, people would say to us, you know, our neighborhood has been getting hotter recently. I thought that was so interesting that, you know, when you say the words global warming, people wanna have a political conversation with you. But when you ask Los Angelinos, is your neighborhood getting hotter? Every single person you talk to says, my neighborhood is recently getting hotter. That's the lived experience of Angelinos with heat. So then we decided we wanted to start doing multiple blocks to see if we could get some kind of neighborhood level cooling effect. And we started using a project selection tool, uh, the Trust for Public Land Climate Smart Cities tool. And with this tool over here, you can, you can move up the absorb slider if you're looking for a uh, stormwater absorption project, climate equity if you want to make sure you're helping underserved communities, cool if you want to do cooling, connect if you want to do active transportation, and protect if you want to do resilience. So when we put the climate equity slider on seven and the cool slider on seven, we get this heat map and we identified this area here. This is the neighborhood is called Winnetka in the San Fernando Valley. And we thought this area here could be interesting because it doesn't get any through traffic. The only people who drive on this arc, this crescent, are people who live on this street and these five cul-de-sacs that come off it. And we thought maybe the lighter color pavement would stay lighter and not get as dirty because there wouldn't be through traffic. So we end up uh, putting cool pavement coating down on these 11 blocks over here. This was in um, uh, the spring of uh, 2019. Well, just last week, uh, Glenn, uh, who you met uh, this morning, Glenn Hulley, um, did a data poll for us. And you can actually see this from EcoStress. You can see a cool crescent at night. This is from uh, August 14th. And um, amazingly, this is Winnetka here. This is that area we just saw, that cool pavement coating is actually creating cooling that can be uh, measured uh, from the space station. Here's another way to look at that data. Basically, the pixels that are within 100 meters of the cool pavement streets uh, are shown on these two histograms in green. Uh, the uh, land surface temperature is on the x-axis, and the probability of having that exact temperature among all the pixels is on the y-axis. And so as you can see, the neighborhood, the ones, the, the areas that are farther than 100 meters from our cool pavement are about, in red there, are about two degrees warmer on average at both at 4 p.m. and 9 p.m. So this is a very important finding for us. This is something um, people have been trying to approve empirically for years. Most of the work on cool pavement in the past has been with computer modeling. And a big reason why we are putting projects out on the public street is we want to actually enable um, scientists to take measurements of real uh, cool pavement projects rather than just simulated. We've inspired other cities. Phoenix just did a big project here, Salisbury, Australia, that did a whole neighborhood in cool pavement. You can see the before and after over here on the left. 
Um, and the next frontier that we're working on is to do multiple interventions to both make streets cooler and improve mobility. So here's a project we did in South LA. We put cool pavement coating down. We put a green accented bike lane to make the bike lane more legible. And then we added a bunch of flowering trees. Um, so, uh, by, and we added some um, shade structures for the uh, bus stops as well. So um, there's a lot you can do if you start using cooling as one of the lenses to help design different interventions in the neighborhood. So here's some information about our agency. And um, uh, if you have questions beyond what we go over right now, uh, feel free to drop me an email or uh, send me a message on Twitter. And uh, it's very exciting uh, to join you today.